Got it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to August 31st edition of the weekly uh, Chaos Community Call. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I'm going to drop the minutes into the chat here. And uh, I think everyone on the call has been in a meeting here before, but if you haven't, um, please feel free to add your name to the uh, list of attendees and tell us something good that's going on in your life. As seems to be the, the case, there's a lot of bad stuff uh, happening, but if you can, if you do have anything good to share, we would love to hear that. Um, before I start, do we have anybody who is down in the New Orleans area or um, like lower Alabama, Mississippi? Do we have anybody? If we do, they're not here. They're not here, yeah. Um, I the, posted it in Slack, but uh, just I hope that everyone's all right. And uh, you guys do know of anybody. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a, it's a, it's the, the real catastrophic thing that's going to get worse is all eight main power lines from the power generation plants to New Orleans were cut off. Those are the giant wires mm -hmm. that hang in the sky. And that stuff takes weeks to get back online. So flooding and oh, yeah, all of yeah. they do have backup generation on the on the bilges that keep the water from filling New Orleans from the ocean. But yeah, good, but it's yeah, it's still kind of a mess down there. So yeah, um, if anybody our, does hear of any any of our community members um, mm -hmm. that are down there and need any help or anything, please let me know and we can arrange something. I don't know what, but we'll figure it out. So. Let me know. Yeah, likewise. There's anything I can do to code without power to help them. Yeah, go fund me or something. Um, okay, so on to the actual agenda. Um, just as a reminder, we do have a metrics freeze, I guess, starting today. Would it start today or would it start tomorrow? Doesn't probably really matter. It starts actually. tomorrow, I guess, is the stated date. So you, you have yet you have through today to to release a metric and get it to Kevin. I is Kevin here. I do have some questions for Kevin about that. In the risk group, we did release some metrics and we think we followed all the steps. Um, one of however, one of the metrics that we'd previous release previously released had not been posted to the website yet. And I think that's because it was released during the website freeze and we just didn't catch up um but those are noted with um new release issues in the in our repository so i there's a few few a couple of them that don't have that release to website check but i the first one's because we just released it and the second one is because i think it was released during the website freeze yeah it's very it's very possible it got overlooked during the website freeze i tried to go back and uh and catch all of those, but I, I may have missed some. The, uh, the timing I mean, could have just been right to get it, like miss it as well. So, so when the uh, when the freeze happens, I will I will make sure that all of the released metrics are uh, on the website. Uh, so that that's actually on my to do list to do later on today, and then double check it tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm looking at your. Uh, how many metrics are you releasing? Uh, two, I believe. Two. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So you have the checklist in there, and I assume you created the translation repo. So you're probably. Yeah. I'm assuming you did everything that you need to do here. And if we uh, didn't, if we didn't, just let us know. I mean, I, this is me, so I probably screwed something up. We just won't find out what it is till you point it out. I don't yeah, I, I mean, for, it, for one metric, uh, everything is complete. For other one, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Out of two uh, in the risk one, uh, I went through all the checklists, but for other one, I have not gone through. So, are there pull requests for this, for these metrics? We well, uh, we did release the pull requests into. Yes, they're they, they are like pull requested and the, the markdown exists in the main branch. Okay. So the, the only thing I'm seeing that's wrong is that there's there isn't a link to the metric in the issue. 
Uh, and that is because the oh, so the links to the metrics. Okay, yeah, the links. So I didn't put them in because most of the links to the metrics and the issues that I'd done in other working groups were to the chaos website, and they hadn't been released yet. And and so I thought I'd go back and do that after that happened. My God, I can't even spell my own name right. I mean, this there's no doubt I've made mistakes. <laughs> No, I mean everything. Everything appears to be good okay. there. So I think cool. uh, that final that final step is to just move it to the website, which uh, I will I will make sure happens uh, at the appropriate time here, uh, or we'll say before before the uh, freeze begins. How about that? Any further comments, questions, discussion about our metrics freeze? I guess maybe my comment is it's been, I, I liked the developments over the course of, since the last metrics release, um, again, with the work of Ritik and Yash, and also the checklist that um, Georg and Lucas had spent time on. There were a lot of really nice improvements just in process overall. Thank you. There were uh, there were uh, other people involved in that as well. So thank you, thank you to, to everyone that worked on those those items. Yeah, and thank you to the Google Summer of Code students and Kevin and Matt and uh, and uh, Vinod and whoever else worked with them to get this process so well ironed out. I think that's a this is so much more clear to me uh, as a periodic metric releaser than it was the last time. So I, I think that's a credit to all that effort. So thank you very much. I'm excited to see how the automated release goes. That's gonna be very exciting, at least for an observer. <laughs> Okay, well, if we don't have anything else, we can move on. And if you think of something else, we can bring it back up again. No worries at all. So the second thing is uh, citing our work through repos and citation.cff. So when we were in the value working group, um, we were discussing this um, feature function, whatever that GitHub now has, where you can generate a citation.cff file and it will automatically um, include your information uh, in certain certain pieces of software. So, um, Vinod, I don't know if you want to add anything about that. Yeah, so we tested the APA style of citation for a value working group repository. So if anyone is using or referring to your value metric, they can cite the value metric. So we thought it will be good if we do the for entire kiosk or other repos or other working groups or whatever the community decide will be one standard that can be adopted for all the working group repos. So we have pasted a link you can open the value working group and see if you click the citation icon, you will see the APS style citation for our uh, value working group repository. So is the idea here that if somebody is in whatever, say like, and I'm writing an article like open source, open source, open source .org. Um, If they mention something that's occurring in the value working group, this would just be a way to cite that work. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Certainly, I mean, I think it's a good idea. So and the especially proposal layer the, is for other working groups too, or well, like entire chaos as a project. I mean, the overhead that you present here is pretty low because you just have it as a single CFF file. I, I wasn't familiar with that extension, but because it's not being added to every metric itself, then yeah, I think it, it's pretty clear. Should we add something like maybe in the readme as well that would just say, if you're citing something coming out of this working group, please see the citation.cff file. Yeah, that is a good idea. Add it, add a line in the readme. Mm -hmm. Yep, how to cite or something like that. So I'm curious about the extension we're using here. Um, what 
how do we consume a file with that extension specifically? Uh, if you go to the GitHub, since I am not on the laptop, I'm unable to share. So if somebody can open the GitHub page of the value working group, there is an icon that you can see and you can copy the exact citation. Okay, I was just wondering about the um, CFF. I looked it up and it says it's CAD file format or the old format of common file format. So I'm not sure. We uh, had to declare a version and we used the example provided by GitHub okay. currently. So that could simply mean that they're providing backward compatibility and we chose the not most recent version of that file format. Oh, makes sense. That's my guess, I'm speculating. a link to um, GitHub's help docs on like how that whole thing works, if anybody's curious. And Arvun worked on that. So if we have problems, we will just go yell at Arvun. <laughs> um, so as a, as a point of an action item, then do we want to have someone add that to all the working groups? Do we want to discuss it in the working groups? Like, what do we want to do moving forward with this? So maybe first thing will be we add it to the readme template that we have for all the working group that uh, how to cite any repo or anything. And once it is incorporated in the standard template, then it can be adopted by all the working groups. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, the aim that value had was because we're working on a metric in this area, we, we simply added it. I, I think it is useful, especially as academics or even bloggers might want to cite facade or um, facade, the tools or the metrics. This gives them a way to do it. Um, when you write a blog, you can actually use a reference and refer people to us and it's a matter of getting credit, but also a little bit of self-promotion in the public sphere, I think. And then we would just need a volunteer in each of the working groups to create that citation doc in each repo. Because it will change a little bit because we, you know, it'll mention the, the specific working group, not just chaos. Right. Yeah. And that, that was one thing we kind of played around with was, a, so the value example is I, the best we could come up with to cite chaos using citation formats, which usually involve a first name, last name. We didn't want to enumerate the name of every person involved in a particular repo because that seemed like a lot of overhead for limited value. I wonder if it's possible to have a default um, citation um, instruction uh, that can be customized, but it's still useful with a minimum of customization. That's true. We could put that under the metrics repo and resources. And Vinod, that, that might, that's probably a good idea. Yes. I'll do that. The only, Go ahead. Yeah, the only thing we had is like, we had a standard uh, citation with just chaos uh, community, but uh, for each working group, we have a name for value. It will be the for uh, risk, it was R, like as an APS citation stand. So we can change that particular thing, but Kiosk community as a whole will remain same for all the citations. Yep. And if somebody like puts a bibliography at the end, then the given name value working group will show up. That, we played with this a while. We know too much and it's not that relevant right now. <laughs> Well, like if somebody was citing it, would it be like in, in the inline text, would it be chaos comma 2021? The full, in the full reference, would it reference the working group? That's the structure of the full reference. So in the, yes, we played with this a little bit. I put it in the Zoom chat. So family name is chaos community. That makes chaos community appear in the inline citation. Okay. And then in a quote unquote bibliography or summary of citations at the end, chaos community kind of value working group. It would further and, specify. Right, where right. right. Yeah. From within the chaos exactly. project. Yes. Yeah, I like that. I mean, yeah. there's a bit. Yeah. Mm. 
I was just going to say, you can see an example of it. If you go to the work, uh, the value working group main repo, mm -hmm. there's a little um, thing under the license. It says cite this repository. And if you click on that, you'll see exactly what it looks like. Okay. Can someone share the screen so that everyone can see it? Maybe? Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> but Matt can, there you go. So where is it? Uh, go a little up, up, up uh, at the very top. Yep, a little more, uh, a little going. more up. Yep, so uh, MIT on the right, uh, on the left side, MIT license cite this repository uh, 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 below the about section where we have a- oh, right here. Yep. Yeah. Yep, click this one and you can, can you see the AP and BIPTEX format you can copy? Okay. So if you, yeah, so now this is just coming. This is included? Yes, because this file is included, the citation is showing over there. I see. If okay. you if you want to edit the citation, you have to edit this particular file and citation will be edited accordingly. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense to me. So it sounds like maybe the, I added a little bit of text in there too for the README. Mm -hmm. It would just say the title of the small README section would be how to cite this work. Um, well, then use the, actually, we wouldn't say this, would we? I'm putting a template in the metrics repo right now as well as a pull request. Like what, what could we say here? If you would like to cite this work the work yeah. in this cast working group, please follow the citation on the right. <laughs> or like, what, where do yeah. we put them? We could, we could also, I suppose, add uh, a link to the uh, citation.cff at the end of the readme. And, and then that would say, if you'd like to, um, cite it. Do this. Like it's sitting right. So like it would just be a title that says like, you know, how to cite this work. And then we would just have a small piece of text right here. It just says that if you'd like to cite this work. Like do we point them to the particular CFF file? Like go see this, or do we point them to this thing? I, I would point them to the actual CS, CFF file because we had a hard time finding the little drop down initially. It's okay. not as it's not as obvious um, okay. as as you would think. Like we so were like, just where is it? Like, oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even I even Vinod was walking me through it and I couldn't find it really easily. Okay, yeah. okay. And I think it will always be named citation.cff. Yeah, I think so too. That. So then honestly, somebody could just, like we could probably just add that, that title and text. So that title and text would then just go into every working group. You yeah, know, on the yeah exactly. Text, that's the same. And then the CFF would change ever so slightly. And there is now an open pull request in the metrics repo to put a sample citation CFF file um, in there under resources. Okay, okay thanks. Cool. Awesome. All right. Decision made. Okay, so should we move on? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah it's okay. okay. All right. So the next um, thing on the agenda was uh, an idea that I had. So of course it's going to be a brilliant one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> So I was wondering if we should have a community repo in GitHub um, that would just be like issues mostly um, where people, if they can't join the meetings or if they have something to bring up that there's like kind of a central space for it. Because um, I see like different conversations floating around on mailing lists and Slack and in this call as well. And um, it just feels like it might be a nice place to have uh, something centralized and asynchronous. So I just wondered what everybody thought about that. It's a wonderful idea. I love it. 
I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> oh, you guys are such good hype men. I love it. I, I, I am awesome. wondering what the what the difference would be between the governance repo and the community repo. Because right now the, the governance repo contains all of that, how to contribute information. And I, I think it contains a lot of things that we might see in a community repo. So I guess the question is, could we use the governance repo for this? The, the governance repo is the empire and the community repo is the rebel alliance. No, I think I think I think you got a good point there, Kevin. Where we don't want to necessarily duplicate the starting point of the organization. I think a lot of people might go to governance to start, or uh, just kind of what seems most centralized. So I think I think I don't know. Govern. We have a lot in governance that maybe belongs in a community repo. Yeah. Would it Would it make sense to just change the name of the governance repo to community? Does that make it more accessible? Is that Is that even possible? I, th I th so I think there are discrete governance questions that people have about a lot of in I would love to be corrected or, or correct you know redirected but I, I think a lot of people have basic governance questions that they would go to the governance repo for and I would go to that to see like how is this project managed in summary I'd go to a community repo with the question how do I get involved uh, in this community so I would like as a noob I would go to repos with those names for different reasons but i might be weird well let's see um so yeah my take i think what sean was trying to say with the rebel <laughs> alliance and with <laughs> is that is, is, flat is that uh like is a is a person like new to the community or even around for a little bit i would have no like i would be like i am not posting anything in a governance repo like that seems like it's not my thing so like joining yeah. auto grade linux like posting an issue in governance is not <laughs> exactly where i would probably gravitate versus something like community is well, so it's a signaling I although think. i do have a car <laughs> so i think there's an important something to be said about signaling Yep, right. I, and I, I agree. That's why I mentioned maybe changing the name of the governance repo to make it more kind of inviting. Uh, and I like I like Matt Cantu's idea of just adding a governance folder to the community repo if we do that. Because I'll be honest with you, this the stuff that's in the governance repo, I don't know what would actually stay in the governance repo and what would move to the community repo. My guess is most of it probably goes to the community repo. Probably. I mean, we have, it's the GSOC and Season of Doc stuff, outreach. So it's a lot of mentorship mm -hmm. down in there. Actually, one, Community two. Community handbook and the code of conduct and the, the mission statement should be in here as well. Data uh, policy seems like a governance thing. So why don't we try to find a way to... Um, Project charter. To put them kind of... And I hate saying silo because I don't like siloing things most of the time. But why don't we look at maybe um, putting these into community-based folders such as governance or mentorship, um, and move move from once we have it categorized. So we would have the top level would be community, and then we'd have a folder called mentorship, and a folder called governance, and a folder called community handbook, like that. Yep. Yeah. And maybe we change the name of the, the repo to community to reflect that it encompasses all of those things. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, you're welcome. Um, it feels like this might, I hope doesn't screw anything up though. Like was we have links spread out. So I don't know what that would do to the existing links from the website and elsewhere would be the only thing. Because we do link a lot to those docs in the governance repo, like the code of conduct and things like that. So, so on maybe the, on the website we can redirect. Uh, may, maybe Georg can share because he's maintaining the community handbook, so he can add his input on uh, how it's going to affect that entire thing. What's the question about the community handbook merging it into this repo? No, changing the name of the repo from governance to community. Like how oh, badly will that screw things up? No, the, 
It, there's not a lot of um, things pointing into the governance repo. And with how GitHub works, when we change the repository name, all the old names will still resolve and just forward to the new location. So changing the repo name is, I don't expect any issues at all. And I'm okay with it. Having a community repo, I think is more inviting as a starting point than a governance repo. Yeah. And uh, enabling GitHub discussions or something for those permanent asynchronous, asynchronous conversations, I think is a good idea. Of course, I would prefer discourse forum, but that's my topic of the last four years. Yeah, so. so let's put that on the agenda for next <laughs> week. <laughs> I know it's not gonna happen. Once we go with GitHub discussions, it's done. So um, now, now that this community governance repo issue is sorted out, should we talk about the metrics repo? Because we, we just had a discussion that involved adding, were we adding, adding something to the metrics repo? Well, there's a resources component in the metrics repo and Sean added the resource of the CS, CFF file, like in a generic form. Yeah, so what is the metrics repo for? What's it the, is because we're a metrics community, we must have <laughs> a top level repo name metrics. <laughs> <laughs> like what belongs in the metrics repo versus what belongs in the community repo. Uh, I know in the past we've talked about retiring the metrics repo, but it, it never quite retires. Okay, I've got a suggestion here. How about we... It's um, got some nice templates in it, and that's right. I know now to go for it go to it for those very simple things. I'll say that. Why don't we take the metrics repo and, and let, look at if we can turn it into a folder in the community repo, but handle the community repo and governance and mentorship thing first. I don't even, so I don't know what a metrics folder in the community repo would even look like. Yeah. Uh, like what actually would belong in that folder. Um, to Sean's point, there are some templates there but there are also templates in the governance repo. Uh, so, so, so we're keeping them in two places. I know to go to the metrics repo for the templates now. You've trained me that way. Not me, I would have told you to go to the governance repo. Might've been me because I like the You're... metrics repo for the metrics template and the quality checklist. Yeah. So the best argument for me if we get rid of the metrics repo is if we all embrace the irony fully that we are <laughs> a community that does metrics work and we have no metrics repo. If we keep the metrics repo, which I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing that we need, we have to retire it. I'm, I would argue that we have to define what exactly is in it and make sure if, if the, if that repo exists, for the templates and for the metrics releases, then all of that stuff should maybe exist in the metrics repo world. Whereas right now we have it scattered around to different repositories. What are you proposing, Kevin? Because at one point you were like, remove the repo. And either either it. remove it or consolidate it. So uh, remove replication and redundancy and and define exactly what we're going to use the repo for, is what I'm asking. What's the redundancy that's in it right now? Uh, we, are, we are creating templates in different places. So it's, a, it's not the actual templates itself, it's the fact that templates exist in different places. Where, oh, where, there, there may be duplicate templates or where are the, uh, templates where, that are a little bit different. Where are the templates other than the metrics repo? Just because I don't understand. In the governance repository, uh, we okay. do have templates for the working groups and the repositories, which all of those I'm fine if we want to move them to the metrics repo because they define the metrics working group structure. Yeah, the metrics, I think things that have defined kind of the meta way a working group works in a metrics repo makes it much easier for a newcomer with an interest that we haven't 
gotten to yet to create a new working group and follow all the basic structures. It's like, that would be a really good use of the metrics repo. And it's kind of where I would naturally look for that, I think. So where is the, where does that particular thing start and the how to contribute documents end? That's what's the... So how to contribute is different than how do I start a working group or how do I operate my working group? And if I want to understand how chaos works and how the working groups are organized, the metrics repo is kind of a meta example in a way of the basic artifacts that we produce in working groups. And how to run a working group that belongs in the- Probably handbook. government. Yeah, yes, I concur. So you want to move the handbook to the metrics repo? Is that what you're no. saying? No. Handbook is the handbook. So the handbook stays, so the handbook, which is how to run a working group, stays in the the now named community repo. But yes. the, the templates for how to create documents within working groups live in a repository called metrics. That's where I see this conversation going right now. Okay. Because the the confusion was we have different templates in different places. I know where they are. I don't mind. But all the templates that we have are about the metrics working groups. It's about the readme. It's about the contributing, the code of conduct, the focus areas. Uh, it's the metric pages themselves and the checklist for releasing metrics. Those are the only templates that we have. And so to me, it makes sense to have all that in the metrics repo. So I, I think that that would make sense to me as well. I just, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that the, the repositories are, are well-defined. So we know what belongs where, and there's not redundancy or replication in between those repositories. So uh, if, if we want to move that stuff to the metrics repo, that would be fine. Do we want to move the Mars stuff into the metrics repo as well? Because that would, uh, if we're doing metrics checklists and things of that nature, then we start, we get into the metrics release area. Matt C has his hand up. Yes, um, this conversation is moving very fast and I'm quite confused. Uh, is there a way we could, I could take on an action item for this, but I think it might be best to piece this out, this discussion out and handle it atomically, like one problem at a time. Because so it seems like we're kind of spreading it out into multiple uh, like ideas and problems and it might just be good to handle it one at a time. I see a lot I like of that, um, Matt, I like that you are um, redirecting focus onto um, problems as opposed to solutions. Like in, in a way, um, the thing that is making the conversation around the metrics uh, repo um, hard, to, hard to parse um, is that um, we're starting with a project as opposed to a goal. Mm -hmm. uh, Excellent and, point. And let me propose um, one definition of the goal, just based on the conversation, which is that um, people don't uh, new new people don't know what the metrics project is. The spare. Okay, so for now, it seems like we want to rename the repo. We're okay with that. Um, and then maybe renaming some folders, some moving some things around, but then we'll just stop right there and see how things go and continue that conversation maybe next time. Is that fair? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Because we do want to leave 10 minutes. Yeah. So the final um, thing on the agenda really is just to let everybody know that the DEI badging meetings are restarting um, weekly. You can see it there on the agenda weekly on Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m. U.S. Central Chicago time. Um, and there is a different link besides our chaos Zoom link to use. So just take note of that. Uh, Matt C., you want to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I think the context might be mis, uh, 
misunderstood here, but the, we have we've had the uh, Wednesday meetings at eight thirty. Uh, the one that we're starting again is ten o'clock, actually, right before this meeting on um, Tuesdays. My bad. No problem. No problem. Uh, well, it's a good opportunity to um, to redirect to. Uh, we are having our outreach meeting specifically for the outreach of the DEI badging uh, organization, reaching out to uh, uh, community organizers and also event organizers and um, potential reviewers. Um, so that that is kind of grown into its own meeting, and we're starting it now that the summer is over, um, back at 10, uh, 10 a.m. Um, I'll just put a, I can put a calendar invite link in here, too. Um, I had to remember when it was too, because it's been so long. <laughs> and it's normally a 30 minute meeting, so don't worry about having to leave halfway through. Um, that's all we have on that. Thanks for clarifying that for me, Matt. I get so confused on calendar stuff, so thank you. <laughs> too many meetings, Oy. okay. Uh, anything else at the end of this, this meeting? Um, before we break to just do a little chaos con. I, Ray, I assume that you wanted it, the chaos con co committee to meet. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think it could be open. I mean, if people want to stay on, I, now that we selected all the talks, I don't think anything's really confidential. Do you care? Um, it doesn't really matter. Or, okay. yeah. You're fine. You're so, cool. So, yeah, I think Sophia is out most of this week. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, as you've seen, all the accepts and declines have gone out last week. And for all the accepts, we requested that they get back to us uh, uh, to confirm their attendance, like whether in person or virtually uh, by the end of the week. And I think we heard from everybody with the exception of two people. Um, so I wanted doing, <laughs> uh, no, I think you're good. Okay. I think we heard cool. from you. Yeah, it's it's actually a couple of people from, uh, I mean, not that I'm singling them out, like a couple of people from RIT we're waiting to hear back from. So hopefully we'll hear back from them soon. Uh, but they have until Friday. Um, the only question, Matt, is I think you were on the email thread, the keynote speaker, I forget her name. Like I realize, I, I guess I didn't realize she was in Canada. Like I thought she was local, but um, there was a... It, yeah, there's an issue with travel, I guess, but. Yeah, and I mean, obviously you can't get here from there at the moment. Right, right. So, I mean, she was sort of local because she's just yeah. in the Vancouver area. So that was. The oh, okay. Thing. So. Right. Is that Emma? Yeah, it's Emma Irwin. Hey. And I mean, at least at this point, I think she, you know, it's, it's play it by ear. I think she'd still like to attend from the conversation we had, but if she can't, she can't. And then, are, go ahead, Sean. I'd say that there are some other really good people she's been working with on this topic and that she might be able to send in her proxy because they're already in the United States. Yeah, I mean, depends on, I guess, where they're located. I mean, uh, I don't know if they're all- like, Seattle, the, mostly. Okay, I mean, if yeah, that, no. that's an option, but the other, like a question that, Sophia and I had was, uh, is there an option to have her talk via Zoom live sure. rather than send the recording? Uh, I know that's yeah. not ideal, especially like in the room, but maybe yeah. that's a backup option. Yep, I got so. the sense in the conversation that that would be an option. Yeah. yeah. It was just over email, so it wasn't like the super- Right, right. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I know Kevin and others are like helping with logistics and equipments and stuff and just want to make sure that was that was okay but yeah i think that is probably an, i mean who knows what zoom and whatever cloud app you're using like how it's going to behave live but if everything works then maybe that's a that's a decent option so I think so too and like maybe yeah. we could just because just because zoom like the keynote we had said would be like 30 to 45 minutes. And if it's mm -hmm. Zoom, maybe we could think kind of on the shorter end. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. we could have a QA and a that maybe right. fills in some of the time that could right. work. Yeah. And then, you know, like I'll, you know, unfortunately I won't be there, but, you know, if it's delivered over Zoom, we can think about collecting questions on like a Google Doc or something yeah. that that uh, we can read out and, and uh, Emma can, uh, respond to via Zoom, but yeah, I, I guess you know if, if if that's 
you know, that's a viable option, then I think we're good. Obviously, we like to have her there in person. I got, the, I got the sense that it was an option. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, this, uh, all this, like, uh, pandemic thing is throwing a wrench into a lot of things, like, nothing we can do. So we'll do what we can, so. Cool. Yeah, and then uh, once uh, Sophia's back, I guess, you know, we can start, uh like sketching out the schedule like in a spreadsheet and then we'll we'll share with the like actual we'll share with the rest of the thing. yeah orders. actual yeah slotting like talks and okay. et cetera et cetera so you're about to share something man what well, on this call yeah. during the nice. call the shirts arrived so yeah. <laughs> we have a it's a nice color it's, yeah, it's a kind of a bluish gray with just the white chaos logo. It's bigger than the last logo. So nice. uh, the colored one was a little bit smaller. So we have got everything now. I've, I, wait, it's not true. I, I don't have the poker chips, but those are those will arrive soon. We have t-shirts. We have the bags. Ray, I'll send you, if you're not going to be there, I will certainly yeah. send you a care package. Awesome. So. Well, appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, worry about the people that are there. Like, uh, I'll, I'll. I'm sure I can get. Oh, this there, Don. I'm looking at Don too. I would happily send mm. you that. <laughs> yeah. I still, I still plan to be there in person, um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if either they clamp down on travel back from the, yeah. US, the UK or VMware. VMware at some point might just be like, nope, you're not going. Um, oh. And I think that that scenario is getting more and more likely. Okay. But I still have my travel booked, so I'm oh, still... rest assured. Rest assured, you will get all the things. Yeah, <laughs> don't come. Now, now that the U.S. is back on the black sheep list of, yeah. for the EU, but, so yeah. The, cool. the question yeah. is whether the U.K. follows suit because the U.K. Right. Now that we're the whole Brexit scenario, we yeah. get to. But I did reach out. VMware will tell me now. Okay, I did reach out to just to the LF yesterday to see if there was any insight, just on OSSNA, and there was none, at least at this point. Yeah, it looks like they're plowing through. With it looks like it. with all the events. I mean, there are like a couple of others, like including KubeCon, that's still. It looks like it's still all in person so far. When is that? Was, uh, Don, is that November? I can't remember. I think it's end of October. Okay. Oh, really? It's that soon? Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's um, it's about a week after the open source summit, I think. Oh. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I yeah, I think at the same same week in the same city, it's not in the same convention center or anything, same facility. Like ONES is another project that's happening at the same time as QCon, and I know that that's in person still. So. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's about it. I guess I didn't need the full 10 minutes, but just wanted to give you a quick update. And then we'll start scheduling things next week once Sophia is back. Cool. Thanks, Ray. And, um, yeah. yeah. And Kevin, I, I don't know if anybody else wants to get involved with the live stream, but we got to connect about that um, just because I know you've done it before. So your expertise might be useful here. I have, I have equipment. So just let me know what you need me to bring. Okay. Sean, Sean is on that team too. We should maybe all three of us just kind of meet and chat. Okay. Sounds good. I'm in, I'm in the AV club. I have webcams, projector screens, projectors, long wires. I'm a total, I, I nerded out over the long pandemic. wires. <laughs> like, like I have, I have like, uh, I have like a USB with that connected 50 foot network cable too. So I can do recordings like in another part of my basement. And then 25 foot USB cables, so I can like do multiple cameras with uh, what's something called ODE, ODF, no, no. OBS, and OBS, oh, okay. OBS. Yeah, I got I got really nerdy about trying to do high quality <laughs> videos during the pandemic because I'm weird. I know where to dump my old equipment now. You'll never notice. <laughs> Just put it in your basement. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm also a bit of a collector. Uh, inside this is the Zapruder film, if uh, anyone's interested in bidding on that. Not great. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can attest to um, having long cables is, 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 a, is a luxury. 
for sure. Yeah. Do we know registration numbers? How many people registered for in-person Chaos Con yet? I haven't. I haven't <laughs> registered. <laughs> I'm going to be there. So I got to ask, Gerg. Thank you. Yeah. Sean, you won't get in if there are no more tickets. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I'll actually, watch it online in the hallway with a beer. I didn't register either because I couldn't remember what we decided about whether speakers got in for free or whether we still had to pay. I'm happy to pay. It's not that much, but. Yeah, I'm also happy to pay. I just. I paid. Hadn't done it yet. I paid. I don't think, did we talk about speakers? I maybe it wasn't there. We had talked about um, the one conversation I was there for was like um, sponsors, but I don't. Maybe the, was... the keynote we had, we had mentioned not having the keynote pay, uh, but other speakers I don't think that was discussed. It'll be a conundrum if we have a speaker who is not signed up with an open source summit ticket, because I know how difficult it is to sneak them into the building past all the Linux Foundation bodyguards. Is it difficult? Because I've done it. That sounds well, like I just experience. Said... Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, a, you know, it was like, I wanted to show a friend what this was all about for like an hour and I had no trouble. I'm glad you said bodyguards and not use another phrase. Muscle? <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm going to go on mute. All right, there it is. <laughs> we can just we can write end things right now. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> we start That's guessing right. the wrong word. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> on that note, I think we can officially call the meeting to a close. So thanks everyone for coming and we will see you next week, if not sooner. Have a great I week. Have a, have a I have one question for Matt. Uh, Matt, can you, can you hold on? Can't do yeah. or, yeah, okay. Uh, German, right. All right, sure. All right, oh, thanks everybody. Okay. I'm see leaving, you. I'm, I'm leaving I, uh, on a jet plane. So for the uh, swag store, yeah, uh, we probably need to link that to a uh, a bank account of some sort uh, oh, so, that, so that we can can we link it to open collective i don't know that would be uh, my, that's my first thought that's all what is is there are there like bank routing numbers that are associated with open well, collective or um i don't know i'd have to ask them or you ask them okay so they've always been really responsive to me okay so they're pretty easy to chat with so are we going to when so if we let's say we we create a so we create the swag store and within the swag store we we have different products that we would give away and we give them away by creating a coupon code and giving the coupon yeah. code to an individual yeah now some of those products might be like a speaker package where you know it's a bunch of stuff yep uh are we going to ask them to pay for shipping or are we going to cover shipping uh, we should probably ask them to pay for shipping. That could get okay. kind of. That's what I was thinking as well. Unwieldy, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I was thinking as well, and that's and that's the that's why that's why I think uh, an e-commerce site is probably the best the best uh, way to do this. I mean, there, there are other ways we could do it, but with an e-commerce site, the shipping is built in, and we can collect the money for it. But we do need to we do need that money to go someplace. Uh, so I would there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me know what you find out there or if we need to create a chaos bank account or anything like that. Is the yeah, I mean it'd be easier if we just had like <clears throat> if it honestly if it just went into a person's bank account and then they made contributions to open collective. So that that's certainly possible as well. Uh, if you want to do that, we could set up something like that too. You know, we just have it go to mine or Elizabeth's or gay orgs or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it probably it probably needs to either be someone who's on the board or someone who's uh, paid to work in the community. So, like Elizabeth would be Elizabeth the smart would would be the smart move. Otherwise, you you know you worry about uh, uh, yeah somebody just theft or whatever, right? <laughs>
It would be best if Open Collective could take the money. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I will. Uh, I'll let you know if I need anything else on that. And yeah, let me know what they say. Right on. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.